guys welcome to my youtube channel my name is adibola and i'm your host on med talks with adibola today i would like to educate us about a very important topic but before i start i would like to tell you all a story please don't go away mrs o lost her first pregnancy by choice when she had an abortion following an unwanted pregnancy when she got pregnant the second time it was a blessing because she was married and ready to start having her babies when she lost that pregnancy, she became very worried. She lost two more pregnancies, including an early stillbirth. This time around, she became very devastated. Mrs. O decided to have a live baby at her cost. She visited so many places, all to no avail. She then met one of her old school friends, who advised her on the need to seek medical attention. She then decided to seek help at the hospital. After a series of tests and examinations, it was discovered that Mrs. O was probably suffering from resource incompatibility. Now, this brings us to today's topic, resource factor. Resource factor. Resource factor, simply put, average factor, is a protein outside the red blood cells. I have two images here. I don't know if you can see them clearly. One is labeled average positive. The other is labeled average negative. So this is what your red blood cells actually looks like. Can you see the projections here? I'm pointing towards the direction. These are actually the proteins I'm talking about. So any individual whose blood group is O positive is resource positive. That means the person has the protein, these proteins. Anyone with O negative blood does not have the protein as you can see here the same thing goes for other blood groups right why am i talking about this topic today my focus today is on average factor as it relates to pregnancy it is important to know your average status before getting married or before getting pregnant average factor can cause complications during pregnancy if as a woman you are average negative and your child is average positive this can happen if your partner is average positive. So children from the combination of these two couple can either be average negative or average positive, right? Average incompatibility occurs when a woman who is average negative becomes pregnant with a baby with a average positive blood. Mixing of blood can occur at birth or after an abortion or miscarriage, whichever one you're comfortable with. It can also happen as a result of prenatal tests like amniocentesis, chorionic villus sampling, and fetal blood sampling. What do I mean by this? Prenatal tests are tests that can be carried out on a baby before the baby is born. Yeah, there are some tests that can actually be carried out before the delivery of a baby, and these tests are quite invasive. So there, there could be exchange of blood between the mother and the fetus. When this happens, the mother's body responds by building antibodies to fight the foreign Rh protein. You know, we already said the Rh negative woman does not have the Rh protein. And now she's carrying a baby that has the Rh protein, a baby that is Rh positive. So when there's exchange of blood between the mother and the baby, the mother tries to fight the Rh protein by developing antibodies. The mother's blood is now said to be sensitized against Rh factor. So the antibodies will destroy the fetus blood cells. When this happens, a disease called hemolytic disease of newborn occurs. Right? This disease is not usually a problem in the first pregnancy. And this is because a Rh negative mother probably will not become sensitized until her blood mixes with the baby's blood during delivery. Right? A baby will be born before her blood can produce antibodies against the baby's Rh positive blood. Once sensitization occurs, any future babies with Rh positive will be at risk of hemolytic disease of newborn. So guys, we've come to the end of today's teaching. I hope we all enjoyed it. Please, if you have any questions or clarifications, please do use the comment section. I will ensure I respond to them accordingly. So by next week, I'll briefly talk about hemolytic disease of newborn and thereafter conclude this topic. Please do not forget to like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Bye!